Hello everyone, this is the solution to homework one. Now we have a system given here and we have basically specifications given here. Now of course it is given that the heating should take 10 seconds means that the settling time is around 10 seconds and a 10% sweep in the desired heat means that we have 10% overshoot that is allowed so it can be 10% more or 10% less but it's kind of a rephrased version of settling time and overshoot. So let's first start with the settling time, which is 10 seconds, and then the overshoot, 10%. And when we know that, we know that this is basically minus log overshoot divided by the square root of pi squared plus log of overshoot squared. And we also know what omega n is, because 4 divided by ts times theta should give us that. So that's that. Now, um, the first question is about an open loop controller. So how can we propose an open loop controller that regulates the heat as desired? There's something called the uh, control with the inverse of the system. So basically, since we are in the uh, open loop, what we can do is we can just come up with a controller that is the inverse of this, so it will get rid of the poles. It's kind of a pole zero cancellation controller, but in open loop. So I, for once, would uh, just say my fs open loop, fs ol, should be equal to tf, and then the same thing here. But since we have some desired uh, pole normal, I can also add that. Before I do that, if I do this, you'll see that the this open loop, the open loop uh, transfer function would be fs open loop times gs, and that would be it, because our open loop strategy is basically fs and gs and nothing else. So therefore, their multiplication will be ts open loop. So um, let's run this. And let's look at TSOL. It seems like this would cancel out. If you want to see the cancellation, you can just use min real, minimum realization, TS open loop, TS open loop. There we go, it's a static gain one. So this means that over all frequencies, this uh, transfer function is the most um, the best transfer function that you can wish for because immediately when you have an input you will see the output nothing will be delayed nothing will be changed it's directly one this is also called an all pass because for all frequencies it's, it's going to be equal to one of course this is not possible realistically because in real life the model will not be uh, linear, it will have some errors, the condition will change, etc, etc. But, if I want to be a bit more realistic, because this heats up in instantly, has no sweep, so it makes no sense, it is too good to be true, so what I can do is I can just add the dynamics that I want, I can say, okay, look, we have the inverse of you, I can get rid of your effects, but I'm going to place my poles there, so it takes 10 seconds, and has a 10% overshoot. So in order to do that, I'm going to just add the desired uh, polynomial here. 1, 2 times theta times omega n and omega n squared. So I have these dynamics too. So I'm basically assuming that my KSOL, let's see. So you can see I uh, these parts are, are getting rid of each other, so they cancel each other out. But we have this desired polynomial. If I look at this step response, I would get what I want. But uh, don't forget that we have a DC gain of 0.4578. So ideally, I need to add omega n squared to it, so the gain is equal to 1. There we go. We get this nice little 
transfer function that we want to have basically. So my controller then looks like this. So maybe I should uh, get rid of this. Maybe ZPK FSOL. Yeah, this is my controller. And then we have our overall transfer function. Now, if I apply step to it, so let me just create another a small figure. Let's have subplot. Uh, let's have it side by side. Hold on, maybe grid on. X1, GCA, maybe X label. I'm going to use it over and over again. So time, Y label should be YT. Title step response. There we go. Let's also have a pull zero map. Sigma J Omega. Pull zero map. Called X2. So I'm going to calculate the step response of TSOL and plot it to AX1, T comma Y, line width 2, and then poles, zeros, PZ map, TSOL plot real part imaginary part let's have blue line width of two repeat it for the zeros of course zeros should be circles of course, these should go on AX2. Let's also assign this a blue color. Yeah, let's see. There we go. Now it seems like it's uh, tracking. It takes 10 seconds. At most, we have 10% overshoot. It seems to be working. So that's one thing. We have only the desired poles, nothing else. Everything is cancelled out. We basically uh, just uh, took the inverse of the system. So G inverse times G is going to be identity. And we added uh, omega n squared divided by PDS. Or we just added omega n squared divided by S squared plus 2 zeta omega n S plus omega n squared. as our ideal transfer function. And it works flawlessly. Now we'll of course see about that. Um, yeah, actually, I, I, you know what? We can just go ahead and um, look at it just directly now. Let's call it GSM. And we know that the coefficients are 8.9, 25.07, and 11.04. <coughs> so let's have a black color for this. But now what I want to do is I want to basically, let me get rid of this. Um, I want to use the same controller, but now I'm going to use it on a different system. Or uh, let's assume that the model is slightly deviating. So let's call it TSOLM. And I want to repeat everything here. And let's see what's really going to happen here. Of course, this should be TSOLM. And M here. Blue 
blue, blue. And I guess it should be it. Let us also see what TS OLM looks in ZPK form. From one. So now we can see that S plus 5, S plus 4.8, S plus 2, S plus 1.9, S plus uh, 1 squared is there, but we don't have really that uh, cancellation here. So nothing cancels each other out. And now let us also give it uh, 15 seconds, I guess. 50 seconds of final time. Now we can see that initially it was tracking the um, input, but now it kind of fails to track it. Of course it takes again almost 10 seconds, but now we have a whole different story about the pull zero map. You can see there are, there's a zero here, there are two poles there, one pole and zero, one pole and zero here, and then there are the nominant ones. But we're still somehow lucky because here we have minus one, and here we have... 0.4, so there's a 2.5 times uh, dominance factor here, if I'm not uh, wrong. It still somehow works, but the uh, heat is not going to be regulated as we wish, but it still works. It'll be a little bit colder than what we want, but it is still uh, acceptable, I would say. But this is actually open loop. We don't measure anything, there's no sensor involved, it's just doing it on its own. It's just predicting how to heat the plant, and this is the best it can do. Um, by the way, I didn't really wiggle around with the coefficients that much. If the deviation here increases, you would expect what the output would do. Of course, it will fail more and more. Uh, so, yeah, this is the open loop part and Q4, the part of Q4. Let's continue on with the P-type controller. Now, for the P-type controller, let me actually, uh, let's say open loop. Let's have this indicator here. So there we go. Let's suppress everything that's not necessary. Um, yeah, let's go on with P-type controller. Now, uh, first of all, we are asked to find the um, the stability interval. That's quite easy. Let's do that first. Um, let's define k real, and then our closed loop, which is k times GSS, and then divided by one plus k times GSS. We're interested in the characteristic polynomial, let's call num then. And then we have PCS basically. We can use root targets, we can use whatever we want, but I'm going to stick with um, the following. Let me just define omega uh, real. And when we have a polynomial, what we can do is we can substitute s equals j omega because it will satisfy its own roots and I am interested in uh, s equals j omega because that's the stability margin. And uh, I'm going to substitute directly PCS s 1i times omega plugging s equals j omega. Now this will become a complex number so the problem here is to equate both of them to zero because this would be basically PCS, where S is J omega, so this would be J omega, equals 0 plus 0J, zero because we're 
kind of a, uh, substituting a complex number, so it should be equal to complex zero. So the real part of p omega should be zero, and then the imaginary part should also be equal to zero. Let's solve this for the problem and see what happens. We have three different solutions, so let's look for k val double sol dot k. Let's repeat it with omega val omega, but we know that k val should be reduced down to k val where omega val is greater than or equal to zero by definition. So k val and omega val will be the result. Now we can see that the uh, origin crossing occurs at minus 10 and uh, the j omega crossing occurs at 56. So the interval would be then minus 10, minus 10 k 56 for this system. So that's the stability interval. Let's try to design a p-type controller. Now basically we will do the same but we will have PCS therefore let me by the way place that so let me also uh, suppress the output of that so now we will have actually PDS which is s squared plus 2 times theta times omega n times s plus omega n squared. Since the system is a, what was it? Uh, let's see. Fourth order system, we have only two desired poles, which means that we need to define a residue pole, which is going to be a second order uh, polynomial. The problem is then to equate the coefficients of PCS, all the coefficients of PCS, to PDS times PS. So let me just display the problem here. Display VPA problem I comma four and let's see we misspelled it let's correct that there we go now we can actually solve this problem seems like we have a here which is approximately 8.2 and then if we plug in that we will get B and then if we plug in A and B this should be satisfied and then we will get K here but it is kind of dangerous because we have A, B and K as unknowns which makes three variables here but we have four equations so uh, it is unlikely to ha uh, result in a solution So, <coughs> and there we go, because we have uh, two equations uh, here, for example, here A has a unique value, and uh, if we solve B from one of these two equations, the other one might not be satisfied. Uh, the only way that this should work is basically these should be aligned. So these should be the same equations uh, so that we can satisfy, satisfy both of them. But it doesn't seem to be the case. Now this tells us the following. We're not able to use a p-type controller in order to decide on its settling time and overshoot uh, simultaneously. So what can we do if we have such an issue? We can... Uh, we can just give up on the p-type controller 
that's also okay. But yeah, we can decide on maybe uh, the overshoot only and see what the settling time will uh, naturally be at. So what I mean by that is the following. Since this is not possible, I'm going to change my strategy a little bit. Um, so let me just display no solution for both TS and OS. But um, I'm going to copy this thing here. Therefore, let's only decide on overshoot. So therefore, I'm going to define sims omega real again. Instead of choosing the omega n value that I've uh, already calculated, I'm just, oh, uh, yeah, of course. Zeta determines the overshoot, so I'm going to stick with Zeta, but I'm going to let Omega be free. And for that case, we'll get a different story here. Because we will have equal amount of equations and unknowns, I'm going to solve the problem here. So let's see. So now you can see we have some solutions, no solution for both of them, but if we change it, A, B, K and Omega are unknowns and there are four equations so we should end up in solutions. And the reason why we have probably three is because of the Omega, that, that's not linear here, but we'll see. So of course we have to convert everything into double in order to be able to comment on stuff here. So let's do that first. So A well, B well, these are important because we will get the stability out of them. Omega well, and then maybe K well, because that's going to be the gain value that we were looking for. So A well, B well, so there are two stable solutions. We should eliminate the negative b-val here. Omega-val, we have again another negative solution. This should go away, this should go away. So we should end up in one. So let's eliminate basically everything here. So what we can do is we can say a-val should be positive and b-val should be positive and omega-val should be Omega valve should be positive. Now, if I run this, <coughs> you can see that only the first one of these solutions satisfy what we want. So I'm just going to say a val equals a val index. Repeat this for b. Repeat this for omega. Repeat this for K. So A val, B val, K val, Omega val. So Omega N val was, Omega N was 0.67, but if we adjust it to 1.08, we will get a solution at least. We didn't decide on the settling time, but we see that it is kind of close or we can neglect the difference here. So let's see. Now, of course, we have the controller now. Let's call it FSP. That's going to be KVAL. And TSP is going to be the feedback of FSP. Now we have a closed loop strategy, comma one. And um, let's have t at TSPM and GSM, if you remember. And let's just copy this here. Yeah. Let's call it figure two. Change nothing. 
So instead of this, we should have TSP. TSP here. Everything thing remains the same here. We don't really need that anymore. So this should be TSPM. TSPM. Let's see. We messed up stuff. Um, of course. Now figure one was open loop. Now figure two is basically the p-type controller. Now, interestingly, we can see that not only is the um, reference tracking poor, uh, we can see there's a huge gain drop here. So if I want to heat, for example, up to 100 degrees, it just reaches 40 degrees, where in contrast, the open loop was doing way better here. But you can kind of see what the deviation does here. The characteristic does not really change that much compared to the uh, open loop strategy here. And you can conclude that based on the pole zero map here. We are kind of on the same zeta line here. And everything moves towards uh, a slight deviation, but it's still there where it initially was. So that's not the case here because we only did have two here and then all the other stuff was pull zero cancellations. It seems like we can conclude that the P-type controller doesn't change its behavior that much uh, compared to open loop. So it has its advantage in terms of robustness or it is basically uh, staying similar. But the problem overall is that we have a gain drop, but that's not because of the um, uh, deviation. It is naturally the problem of a P-type controller. It drops uh, its gain. We can use a prep filter uh, by not aiming at 100, but maybe aiming at the inverse of this DC gain. Maybe we should give it 400, so it kind of or like 250, so it takes the 40%, it will get rid of this and it will track it, but it's not really a good thing. We see that reference tracking is not really a thing for the P-type controller for this system. It doesn't heat that good, but if it would have worked, then the P-type controller would have been better because it sticks to its behavior even though we change some of the parameters. So having measurement and having a closed loop uh, has its advantages in terms of behavior. It is behaving almost the same because if I uh, look at the pole zero map, I can see, yeah, there is a change, but well, it's not really that important. And compared to this here, this, uh, steady state value is a huge percentage whereas both of them are around 0.4 so the difference is not that high um can i show it to you well i could try i could try the following if i have y end so the last value of y which is this take the inverse of that and calculate everything or multiply everything by that, it should correct itself. So let's have y divided by y end. Let's see if it works for the first one. Of course, this is not that correct, but I want to adjust it so that it becomes one. There we go. If I do the same on the second one, if I somehow scale them up, Um. <coughs> if I scale them up, you can see the difference uh, is there. If I would have scaled them up, if I would use a prep filter, the P-type controller would actually work uh, like that, but then 
these gains are not the same gains, so I have to use basically uh, YSS. So this would be YSS here, and I would just call it Y end. Um, like this, and I would divide into the same YSS because this is set up once. And we'll end up in this result, but you can see that the difference here should not be as big as in this case, but still it's not a good controller. It's just good in the way of um, having more robustness in terms of behavior. The behavior is more like it. So the, the, the conclusion that I'm drawing here is that the pull zero map changes a lot that will affect its behavior whereas this one here has a similarity to it more than the open loop controller. So it's a, a bit better than open loop but not the best. Um, so what about a PI type controller? So let's try to design a PI controller and see what is going to happen. So let's actually go up here. Do we have another task? Define all PI type controllers that stabilize the closed loop and provide a PI type controller that achieves the specifications at go as good as possible. So let's again go throughout this route here. Let's paste that there. Let's call it a PI controller. Now, KP and KI are my coefficients. My controller is going to be KP plus KI divided by S. And then we will have FSS times GSS divided by one plus FSS times GSS Let's have the zeros. Maybe it is going to be relevant. Maybe it's not. We'll see. So, um, this is the closed loop. Let's have the controller zero. We don't need the stability stuff here. So, we have the desired pull here. We will use omega n and the zeta values. But in this case, our residue pull normal will grow one. So it will be s cube plus a s square plus b times s plus c because we have a PI controller that increases the overall closed loop uh, order. So PDS times PES and then let's see what the problem looks like. So now we have basically this set of equations here, A, B, C, K, P, K, I, five equations, um, one, two, three, four, uh, so A, B, C, three unknowns there, two unknowns, uh, so it should be five, and we again have five unknowns. So it seems like we should have a unique solution here. So let's see. Let's solve this. See if we can solve it. Yeah, we have a unique solution. Solve that A, positive, solve that B, positive, solve that C seems to be positive so we can use this solution. So let's define our controller. Fs should be equal to Tf. One zero double sol dot kp sol dot ki. Now let's have the feedback. fs times gs comma one let's also have the deviated model here and let's basically copy and paste the stuff here so figure three ts and ts 
TSM, TSM, and we should be good to go. Let's run it one more time. So there we go. Now this is the PI controller. And um, what we can see first of all is that even though the overshoot kind of changes or stuff changes, we are able to track both if the model is deviated or not. So the controller performs way better than the Opalip strategy and the P-type controller. Uh, and basically, we again have the same argument based on the pole zero uh, map. We have a, a, a similar pole zero uh, map, even if we have slightly change in the position of the poles. So in terms of robustness, it's way better than a P-type controller or the Opal Noob. Of course, stuff changes, but it tracks at least. Um, and the reason behind that is basically the integrator that is uh, in the controller. If we have an integrator, we can uh, successfully track step type inputs. If not, we cannot do anything like that. So even though the uh, question was asking for all the possible ones, we have just a unique solution. We have five equations and five unknowns. There, uh, therefore, we will have a unique solution and only that unique solution. So we cannot optimize it or we cannot change anything about it. There's just one controller that satisfies both the um, settling time and overshoot values. And we can see uh, we have actually uh, done this uh, along. So we have three controllers, open loop strategy, um, P-type controller and PI-type controller. And we can see that the PI-type controller can uh, compensate the uh, changes in the model or deviations in the model parameters. So designing a PI controller is important. But then again, we have a zero of the controller that can cause problems. But then again, we have the integrator, which gives us this tracking property. So each controller has its own pros and cons. But it seems like this is a good controller. But we can also see that the, we have a lower overshoot here for the deviated one whereas it was a bit higher and uh, yeah depending on the position of the zero and the additional poles it is quite tough to come up with a pi controller because the complexity of the problem increases the more uh, poles we have in the closed loop uh, the more the dominance is going to be important so hope that this solution gave you uh, some uh, and uh, yeah, see you in the next videos.